departure on the left-hand side and, and runs to Saturday, 26th of April. And what you see when you look at this data is how um, um, volumes of, of all kinds of traffic have fallen relative to how much tra travel there was in the first week of February. So in particular, uh, we remain pleased to see uh, that the use of public transport is below 20% for buses, the tube, and national rail. And we just very much hope that all those people in motor vehicles who are not below 20% um, are pro practicing really excellent social distancing when they get it wherever it is that they're going. Next slide, please. We know that's been a lot of work for everybody. And um, the slide is new cases in the UK uh, between the 21st of March and the 28th of April. And what it shows is that that... that so, so this is new positive tests. In dark blue is tests that happened in hospitals. And in orange is additional testing that has become available for key workers. And what you see in that slide is how uh, that number of positive tests rose very quickly in th uh, through the latter part of March and has now stabilised. And the blue line, the numbers in hospital positive tests, is starting to fall, although because the number of tests is still rising uh, overall, uh, we're still getting about the same number uh, of positive tests across the UK. Next slide, please. This, instead of counting tests, counts people. So this is people who are in hospital with COVID-19, again, across the UK. And what you see is, the, uh, is that overall, uh, that has fallen by 14% uh, in the last, I think it's in the last week. Sorry, I'm looking for a date. It's, yes, over, over the last week, that has fallen by 14%. Particularly dramatic for uh, in peaked early compared with the rest of the country, um, and several other regions of England now clearly falling, although a few regions of England, uh, that number of people in hospital is, is still stable uh, for now. Next slide, please. This is critical care beds in which there is a patient uh, with COVID-19. So this is two kinds of critical care beds. Uh, those in high dependency wards and those in, ten in intensive care wards. And the four different lines are England, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. And what you see is uh, what percentage of those beds that can be used for critical care are occupied by a patient with COVID-19. Again, what you see is uh, across our four nations that has peaked and is beginning to fall as a percentage. Next slide, please. We have to turn to how many people have died from COVID. And our first way of counting that is daily COVID-19 deaths in hospital. So this is a slide that many of us will be familiar with. It's the way we have been counting uh, for more than a month now. When you look at that slide, the first thing you see is this, uh, well, I guess the first thing you see is that the number of deaths in hospital has started to fall. It's been falling for the last two weeks. You see that most easily by looking at the orange line. The orange line is a seven-day rolling average, and the reason we use that is that there are these very strong weekend effects in these data. So what you see is that uh, out of every seven days, there are always two days when it's really low, uh, followed by a day when it's, a much, when it's much higher. Because today is Tuesday, it's higher today, uh, because on a Tuesday, uh, we, we report results uh, from a few days ago. Um, I think the most important thing to see there is that the orange line is falling steadily. But this is just one of the ways that we can count how many people have died with COVID. Next slide, please. This is a different way of counting the same thing. So this is all weekly registered deaths from COVID-19 across the UK compared with what I just showed you, the deaths in hospital. So let's just look at the last bar, which is for the week leading up to the 17th of April. The dark blue bar is what we just looked at, but, sum, but summed up up to then, whereas the pale blue bar 
is all weekly registered deaths. So that's everybody, uh, not just the people who died with COVID in hospital. If I could have the next slide, please. So what the next slide does is it takes uh, the, the, the pale blue line that we just had and breaks it out into a, a number of different uh, locations. So what you see is uh, hospital is the right-hand bar um, in, the, in a sort of um, smoky blue. Just to the left of that is people who died with COVID in care homes. Just below that is people who died with COVID in their own home. And then the smallest bar is other locations. So what you can see here is that deaths from COVID are dominated by those deaths in hospital, but that is not the only location in which such deaths are seen. Next slide, please. The last slide for today compares UK deaths with those in other nations. So these lines are lined up against the first day when there had been a total of 50 deaths accumulated in each of these nations. And we have two different lines on there describing what's happened in the UK. Towards the right-hand side, you see a dark blue line labelled UK hospitals only, and that's the data that we've been collecting and showing for a long time. So it's people who have died with COVID in UK hospitals. Whereas a grey line further over to the left there is people who have died with COVID in the UK in all settings. And not surprisingly, if you count all settings, that line is higher than the people who died in UK hospitals. Um, that's the end of the data for today. Thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed. As with yesterday,